Earlier, Law and Home Affairs Minister Keshan Mugam assured Parliament that all are equal in the eyes of the law. Uh, there was also no undue influence exerted by businessman Liu Man Leong on investigations into party liani. Now, Mr Shamugam made these points in a marathon speech on the justice system, even as he clarified that the High Court's decision to acquit Miss Party is final. No appeal will be made. Now, he acknowledged that authorities who handled the case can and should do better, but he asserted that uh, there had been uh, grounds to charge Ms. Party. Now, Ms. Shang, Mr. Shamugam also questioned the conduct of Mr. Carl Liu, whom he described as not credible as a witness during Ms. Party's trial. Now, we'll be taking you through the entire story by focusing on its central characters. First, fresh insight into the Liu family. New investigations show that the family's sacking of Ms. Party Liani was not sudden, which the High Court had concluded. It had viewed the sacking as a possible move by the Liu's to stop Ms. Party from calling them out for flouting employment laws. Now, the family's motive was key among the reasons why the High Court threw out the Indonesian's earlier theft conviction on appeal. But Mr. Shamugam said the Liu's had been thinking of firing Miss Party as far back as late 2015 and they believed that she had been stealing from them. Now, this was months before she began working in Mr. Carl Liu's home. The Liu's began hunting for a new maid and identified a replacement in September 2016. Now, when the new helper was finally available, about a month later, the Liu's terminated Miss Party. Two days later, after Mr. Liu Manliog returned from a business trip, the family made a police report alleging that Ms. Party had stolen some of their items. Mr. Shamugam explained in Parliament that a police report would not have stopped Ms. Party from lodging a complaint. Making a police report will not prevent Ms. Liani from returning to Singapore. The High Court made the same point to Defence Counsel during the hearing. Indeed, in this case, it didn't stop her from returning to Singapore. And making a police report will also not prevent Ms. Liani from filing a complaint with MOM. Should Ms. Liani attempt to return, police investigations would also require her to remain in Singapore, once again offering her further opportunity to pursue an MOM complaint. Mr. Shanmugam also put the spotlight on the Liu's credibility, in particular, Carl Liu's conduct during Ms. Party's trial. Uh, this was another reason why the High Court acquitted Ms. Party. And these items that you see there are central to this argument. They were among things that uh, the Liu's alleged that Ms. Party stole and packed into boxes to be shipped home to Indonesia. Uh, Mr. Carl Liu did not clearly identify items he claimed Ms. Party had stolen. For example, it wasn't clear if he it actually owned a black dress. Now, he also claimed that the branded wallets uh, here either belonged to him or were gifts from family. Uh, this couldn't be verified, though. Now, in Mr. Shanmugam's words, Mr. Carl Liu's conduct and evidence was highly unsatisfactory and raised scepticism. Now, Mr. Shamugam also gave new information on Ms. Party's role in the episode. The minister says she had intended to file a complaint to the authorities about not being given sufficient notice for dismissal. This contradicts the earlier assumption that she was going to tell on her employer about being illegally deployed. Mr. Shamugam also says Ms. Party faced charges of theft, regardless of how evidence was handled by the police. Ariel Lim reports. A maid agent who was present during Ms. Party's sacking in the Liu home has provided fresh perspective on the Indonesian's intention to make a complaint. This was an important point during the appeal as it raised questions about the Liu's motives to sack her. According to the agent, Ms. Party had said, quote, I want to complain because you gave me too short notice. This contradicts the earlier belief that she wanted to file a complaint for having to work illegally in Ms. Kao Liu's home. Investigations show that the agent offered to help her lodge a complaint there and then, but she declined. The offer was made a second time when they were at the agent's office, before they left for the airport to fly back to Indonesia. Ms. Party again turned down the offer. She only did so after she was charged about a year later. 
Mr. Shanmugam also called attention to the other major reason for Ms. Party's acquittal, what's known as a break in chain of custody. This refers to evidence, in this case, items that Ms. Party had allegedly stolen and put in boxes to be sent home. The Lews had used some of these items for over a month after they had discovered them in the boxes. The High Court held that theft couldn't be proven as there may have been interference. But this doesn't apply to some items, including a Prada bag and a pair of Gucci sunglasses. These were found with Miss Party when she re-entered Singapore after being sacked. There has been a misunderstanding among some that all the items are affected by the break in the chain of custody. If we remove those items possibly affected by the break in chain of custody, there would still be four theft charges against Ms. Liani. In explaining why Ms. Party was charged in the first place, Mr. Shanmugam said she had admitted to taking some items. In her second statement, dated 4th of December 2016, Ms. Liani said, I only took about 10 to 15 pieces of men's clothing belonging to my employer's husband. I admit that I took it without informing my employer or her husband. And... She also said, I only admit to taking the 10 to 15 men's clothing belonging to my employer's husband without consent, and I did not steal any other items. Her statement that she did not steal any other items is also very significant. Prima facie on the statements, this would appear to be theft. Miss Party's statements to the police were another point of contention. The High Court had questioned their accuracy. Since she wasn't given a Bahasa Indonesia interpreter in four out of five statements she gave. Mr. Shanmugam said that the police had believed in good faith that Ms. Party understood Malay. She had worked in Singapore for over 20 years. The recorder asked Ms. Liani in Malay whether she wished to give her statement in Malay or in Bahasa Indonesia. She chose to speak in Malay. There is no significant difference between Malay and Bahasa Indonesia in the asking of that question. She did not ask for an interpreter during the recording of her statements. Recorder testified in court that he was able to communicate with her without any difficulties. Mr. Shamugam said an interpreter was present for Ms. Party's final statement, which covered the majority of the previous statements and items she was accused of stealing. And this means it wasn't affected by language issues. Curbed, restrained, prevented. The spotlight was also cast on investigative protocols and how the police and prosecutors operate. Following police investigations, the Attorney General's chambers decided to charge Ms. Partigliani for theft based on sufficient evidence at that time. However, Mr. Shanmugam acknowledges there were gaps in the way the agencies did their jobs and these lapses are being reviewed. Geraldine Yap with more. From police investigations to the decision to charge Ms. Party. The Law and Home Affairs Minister stressed that this case was handled in the same way that any other routine theft case is dealt with. Both the police and the AGC thought Ms. Party to be untruthful based on investigations. They cited various reasons, including inconsistencies in her answers. Putting all that together, the AGC found that there was enough evidence to charge Ms. Party. This decision was cleared at a director level and was not escalated to higher management. AGC also took the view that there was a clear public interest in prosecuting Ms. Liani. Two reasons. One, it appeared that Ms. Liani had stolen many items, including some seemingly expensive items. And two, it appeared that she had been stealing for years and it was not impulsive spur of the moment decision. However, Mr. Shanmugam admits this matter has uncovered lapses in how the case was managed. He cited three ways police investigative processes were deficient. First, there was a gap of about five weeks between when the report was filed and when the police visited the scene. Second, Miss Party was shown black and white photos of the evidence. The layout of the items in the photos was also not satisfactory. Third, her statements were not recorded accurately, in part due to translation issues and grammatical errors. Mr. Shanmugam says the explanation given to him is that the police officer involved was juggling other cases and personal matters and seemed to have been under a lot of work pressure. 
He adds that this is a reality for many officers, illustrating his point with figures from 2016, where more than 66,000 criminal cases were handled by just over 1,000 investigation officers. However, there can be no excuse for this lapse on the part of the police officer. It is a breach of a legal requirement. It is also a breach of police protocol both of which require the police to respond to a crime scene promptly or as soon as practicable. The internal investigations are being carried out in relation to the conduct of the officers involved in this case and action will be taken as necessary. Lapses on the part of the AGC have also surfaced. Mr Shanmugam highlighted the example of how the functionality of a DVD player which Ms Party was accused of stealing was demonstrated in court. He says the matter is now the subject of disciplinary proceedings and there will be a full account of what the deputy public prosecutors did. Specific areas where the AGC needs to improve have also been identified. For instance, formal guidelines are being drawn up for prosecutors to help them assess the value of items in cases like this. The AGC is also looking at how it prepares for trials. There is a further general and important point. Prosecution's overarching role is to ensure that justice is done and not to win the case at all costs. The point is not being made by reference to this case. It is a general point. AGC has consistently emphasized this point to all its officers and will continue to do so. The Attorney General himself has also publicly stressed his chamber's commitment to the principle of even-handed justice in his speeches at the opening of the legal year and elsewhere. The High Court and its decision also featured heavily in Mr Shamugam's speech. He said its decision to acquit Ms Party is final and there will not be an appeal. Second, I'm making no comment as to whether the High Court's decision can be relied upon or whether the judge's comments can be re-looked at in other proceedings. For example, in any proceedings that Ms Liani or others are or may be involved, there are rules of evidence relating to these matters. Third, in this case, we have had to deal with the questions raised whether there were or any systemic issues with our law enforcement processes. And for that purpose, we have to discuss the judgment, the government's view, and also look at some additional factual material, which we came to know of after the judgment was delivered. Mr. Shamugam says both the Liu's and Ms. Party gave inconsistent evidence. The Liu's had said things that contradicted other family members. He adds that many aspects of Carl Liu's conduct and evidence are highly unsatisfactory, and he appeared not to be a credible witness. As for Ms. Party, her answers changed between statements. Among her reasons for that was that she didn't understand the questions posed and that her answers were not recorded accurately. The police and AGC thought she was untruthful, as did the state court. The High Court, however, took a different stand. The High Court gave her the benefit of doubt because it was troubled by Carl's improbable, unreliable statements, some other inconsistencies in the Liu's testimonies and their conduct and for other reasons relating to the reliability of Ms. Liani's statements. Uh, if there were issues with the statement taking, then that affects the question of whether there were in fact inconsistencies in her statements. Mr. Shamugam says about one in 10 appeals that uh, goes from the state court to the high court succeeds. The convictions may be set aside or sentences reduced. They can be due to different views on several factors, such as evidence or law. In Ms. Liani's case, the high court disagreed with the state court's assessment of the evidence. Mr. Shamugam says the key question was if the case was conducted fairly in both courts and not whether which court was right or wrong. He said the state court's decision came after hearing from 16 witnesses from both sides over 20 days. It had the chance to observe the witnesses, consider the evidence and Ms. Liani's submissions before making its findings. On the other hand, the High Court considered the State Court's findings and Ms. Liani's further submissions over three days and came to a different view. 
I have brought this house through some of the issues in detail, as I said earlier, to give members a slightly better appreciation of the evidence. The matter was thoroughly ventilated and considered by both the state courts and the high court. It was one of those 10% of cases where the appeal court disagreed with the lower court.